Dr. Bhatia, you have been studying Myan since long. What are your views regarding this concept given by Dr. Hanneman? Uh, when I started studying about Myas initially as a student, uh, my first perception about Myas was that Myas is uh, a predisposition towards disease. That was my first uh, interpretation of Myas. Uh, but when I actually read chronic disease uh, a couple of years later, and then I realized that what Henneman meant was not merely a predisposition to disease. Uh, if you read chronic disease, you will find that he has mentioned mias which are infectious, which are communicable, and that, uh, and at many cases they relate to uh, infectious parasites like bacteria and viruses. So when I read that, I was in a bit of turmoil, whether mias are infections, bacterial and viral infections, or they are a predisposition to the acquired, uh, they are a predisposition to disease. Later on, I realized that they are both. Later on, I realized that they are both. And that is my understanding of mias at present. They are mias, which are acute mias, which Hanneman uh, gave the same acute mias, which are nothing but acute infections. And they are chronic mias. Now, the chronic mias are again of two types. They can be acquired or they can be inherited. So acquired mias are those which uh, is the disease predisposition that you acquire within your lifetime due to a variety of factors. And uh, the chronic mias are those that you inherit from your family. Okay, so what new approaches are there to understand mias? Many people have tried to explain Mias differently and uh, they have tried to modify the theory of chronic Mias given by Dr. Hanneman. The one thing that initially people did was they tried to increase the number of Mias. Uh, first came the tubercular Mias, then the carcinosin Mias, and then people have come up with a variety of uh, Mias, uh, smallpox Mias, and uh, diphtheria Mias, and uh, you name it, you name it, they have it. Uh, there are n number of mias. Then there have been some uh, other variations of the mias theory, the most famous being that of Dr. Sankar, uh, who has given different mias like uh, malaria and ringworm. And, uh, but his mias are uh, very different from the concept that, uh, that has been given by uh, Dr. Hanneman. Uh, he, his mias are more uh, according to the level of reaction of the patient, the level at which the patient reacts the level at which the disease is but what Hanneman was talking about was more tangible more tangible, more measurable uh, but uh, that is not the case with Dr. Sankar's Mias then uh, there have been some other approaches like Dr. Vijayka's approach in which he has tried to relate Mias with the cell, cell defense and uh, there has been uh, Grant Bentley's approach in which he has tried to relate Mias with facial analysis. So these are some of the new developments, new approaches uh, in relation to Mias that I am aware of. Uh, Dr. Bhatia, you have been studying epigenetics in relation to Mias. What is epigenetics? Epigenetics is a new uh, stream of science which explores uh, the non-chromosomal transmission of uh, genetic information, inheritable information. What it basically does is, uh, so far, uh, genetics has believed that everything that uh, goes from one generation to the next generation is governed by genes. Our uh, phenotype is only governed by the chromosomes and genes that we acquire, that we inherit from our parents. But what epigenetics proposes is that there are certain uh, methods through which non-chromosomal transmission of uh, genetic information is possible. And uh, how that is possible is that initially, usually, uh, we knew that only 2% of uh, the chromosomes, 2% uh, of the DNA was responsible for coding the proteins that we felt were responsible for all the things, all our phenotypic, phenotype and uh, other development. Uh, development. Rest of the uh, DNA was cons either considered junk or non-active. 
But now uh, scientists know that a lot of this genetic material that was initially considered junk is uh, works in controlling the genes that actually work in, uh, express. They work as switches. And apart from that, there is uh, another method which we call. Uh, there are chemicals, there are molecules within our cells which control the expression of these genes the methy through methylation, phosphorylation they, they work as switches, genetic switches so they can, although we cannot alter the genes the, chromos uh, the chromosomes and the genes per se cannot be affected by uh, what we experience in this lifetime but the epigenetic uh, information can be uh, affected by, by, by what we experience in our lifetime and epigenetics is the science that studies that effect like what effect our environment has on our future generations what if, if one generation starves what effect is going to have on future generations if one uh, generation uh, suffers from uh, overeating or eating very rich food due to certain circumstances what effect it is going to have in the future generations uh, what if one generation suffers from per one particular disease what effect it is going to have in future generations earlier this was not considered possible that your experiences in one generation are going to transmit in a non-genetic non-chromosomal way to future generations but epigenetics makes this uh, understanding possible that what you experience in one generation it's possible to transmit the memory of it or the effect of it uh, in future generations there has been a lot of research regarding this and uh, it is a very interesting new field okay so how do you relate epigenetics to miasma well what uh, miasma the concept of miasma that Hahnemann gave especially the miasma that are inheritable the effect, what he said initially was that there are three primary mias, sora, syphilis and psychosis and Hahnemann said that these sora, syphilis and psychosis are inherited, acquired I mean if you get that infection and that infection is suppressed, that infection is maltreated then you get an acquired mias, then you get an acquired predisposition to disease and in future generations that effect is also noticed which we call inherited mias we uh, homeopaths know clinically uh, through our classification of symptoms that we often uh, say that this patient has a syphilitic miasma or this patient has a psychotic miasma or this patient has a soric miasma so uh, it's a similar concept uh, that the effect of a disease experienced by a person in this generation can be transmitted to the future generations without the future generations actually acquiring the disease so this concept can only be explained through epigenetics because technically we know that there are no genetic changes occurring no uh, chromosomal changes occurring in the genetic sequence uh, in, in those generations we cannot measure that but we know that uh, homeopaths throughout these 200 years of clinical experience have observed that if one generation suffers from one particular disease then there are certain appreciable changes that can be seen in future generations and that is what epigenetics is all about epigenetics also says that if one generation experiences something through environment any meteorological influence, dietary changes, infections then the effects of those uh, phenomena can be experienced in future generations in some form and that is where epigenetics and NIAS come together epigenetics is the only method in which we can explain uh, the theory of chronic NIAS that Hahnemann gave and it has got huge implications if we are able to do that uh, because the science is still uh, in a very uh, early stage the science of epigenetics but as the more research is conducted in the epigenetic effects of uh, acute and chronic diseases then it would be very much possible to understand what Hanneman proposed as the theory of chronic miasma what is the effect of sora, psychosis and syphilis in future generations 
the mias would then become quantifiable and that would have huge ramifications for this theory as well as for the acceptance of chronic mias and homeopathy at large. Thank you Dr. Bhatia for these insights into the development of theory of mias. Thank you.